All in. Everybody's all in. We're back at Capital Casino, buying to the 1-3 game for $500. There is a early player that limps. Player in the low jack raises 15. I call and so does the button. So we go four ways to this flop with 64 in. Flop comes out 8-7-6 rainbow. We do have a club, so we have a backdoor draw. Let's check to the pre-flop raiser who puts in a uh, two-third size bet. I feel like he has a big pair at this time and it's kind of like a go-away bet. He just wants you to fold. Uh, I would only have a gut shot and a backdoor draw, but I also had some bad intentions if a scare card comes up on that, because that's definitely more advantageous to my raise, range than to his. I put in the call. Player on the button also puts in the call. And the other player folds out. So here we are with 184 in, and we see a nine of diamonds. Well, yeah, it's a perfect card. We make the nuts. There's not too many redraws unless someone has a set or two pair. First player checks. I'm going to bet here. I was going to bet on any scare card, so I might as well bet when I make it to. I put out a bet for $70. I should be able to get some action for someone who maybe has a 5. Hopefully someone has a 10. And if they have two pair, yeah, I'll let them string along for that price as well. So the player on the button puts in the call. The other one folds out. River card comes as a 3. Now, it's just hoping that the person has a 10 and did not raise. So, I'm going for the jam. It's a, uh, it's a big bet. It's a pot-sized bet. I'm not going to try to squeeze out another dollar out of a hand like top pair or a, a two-pair type hand. I'm going for it all. If he has a 10, he's going to pay me off. He thinks for a while and he says I, he knew he was, I was going to do that. And he ends up folding his hand. I never did see what it was, but I imagine that it was something like two pair. There is a $7 straddle in front of me. I open for 25 with ace-king offsuit. Hoping just to narrow down the field, but that's not what happens. We end up getting a slew of callers. And uh, we're going to end up going five ways to this flop with 129 in the pot. Well, hoping for a good flop and we get... Uh, well, it's not bad, but it's not great. It comes queen, ten, four, rainbow. So we just have two over cards and a gutter. Uh, first person checks. I'm going to go ahead and see bet this thing for $50. Trying to represent that like I have something. And I still got maybe 10 outs if someone has a top pair type of hand. Anyway, it gets folded all the way back to the initial straddler. And I can tell he's not in love with his hand. But it might be something like a top pair with a very weak kicker or maybe second pair. We go heads up to a turn of a queen of spades. And I was kind of watching him and I can tell that he liked this card. So I'm thinking that he has more of a queen with a weak kicker. He checks to me. I'm just going to check it back. Hoping to catch a jack. And it's a three. Yeah, I think I'm done with his hand. He bets out for $100. The only hands I'm really beating are... Hands like King Jack or Jack Nine. I could go for a bluff raise, but you know, my read is that he probably has a queen and I don't think he's going to be folding. So it's just time to give it up. We're about even on the day so far. Look down at two sixes from under the gun. Decide to raise it up to $15. End up getting one, two, three, and four callers. So we're going to go five ways to this flop with $75 in. Looking for something good, and that's exactly what we get when the flop comes out. Jack, eight, six, with two spades. So, it's a very draw-heavy board, and I have a set, and it's a bottom set. So, I probably get actions from a jack, a straight draw, 
and a flush draw. So I bet out $50, a little bit on the larger side, just because of it being so draw heavy. I want to build a pot. So, but, you know, turn cards a blank. I can put some pressure on those draws. Anyway, it gets folded all the way to the person on the button who doesn't think too long before putting in the call. Now they could have something like um, top pair, straight draw, flush draw. And we get to see a turn card, which is not my favorite. It is a queen of diamonds. It does put up a secondary flush draw. It completes the obvious straight. And it takes away from someone who has a hand like King Jack, because now they don't have top pair anymore. But it's such a dry heavy board, they could have a jack of diamonds with another diamond. Or they could just have a flush draw with, say, two spades, and now they made a top pair. So I decided to bet pot. I want to be able to get all my chips in by the end of the sand. If they happen to have a good hand, I want to get max value. And I don't want to give a cheap draw. They think about it for a while and finally decide on a fold. And uh, even though it's not a big pot, we uh, add some chips to our stack. A player opens for a raise to 15. He gets called in two spots, and it comes to me in the small blind with ace-jack offsuit. Uh, definitely a good spot to put in a squeeze, except the player who's opening is usually not opening very loose. Usually has a pretty tight opening range, so I'm just going to put in the call and see what happens, and so does the big blind. So we're going six ways to this flop, which comes out queen, 10, five with two diamonds. So I check it, the player on the big blind bets out for $30. I do have a gut shot, I do have a backdoor flush draw. The razor, initial razor puts in the call, and so do two other players. And I'm thinking, wow, this is a lot of action. I'm, I can't fold this, and I got a backdoor nut flush draw, and I got a gutter to the nuts. And we get to see the king of clubs. How sweet it is. I check it, the player to my left bets for $100, which is really good. I'm, I'm thinking of check rates. The player puts in the $100 out of turn at the end of the table. And the dealer says, no, it's not your action. So if the action doesn't change, he's gonna be required to put in $100. But the initial raiser doesn't want him to be the, in their drawing. So I'm thinking that he might have a hand like mine, like ace jack, or maybe two pair with king queen, possibly an over pair. And he raises to $200, which is the min raise. Now the player at the end of the table who originally wanted to call 100 mucks his hand, player on the button mucks his hand, and here with the nuts and two players that have shown interest, I'm gonna get my chips in. I go for the jam. Player in the big blind now takes a peek back at their cards, decides to get away from it. And the other player puts in a snap call. I figure we're chopping, and uh, river card comes as a jack of hearts. I announced that I had ace jack. They end up showing that they had pocket queens, so they flopped top set. And um, yeah, gave me a good price to get there, and I did. So lucky for us, and uh, we win a very nice pot. Well, here I'm in the big blind, and I got queen jack suited. Player open for a raise to 20. Small blind calls, I call. And we're going off to a flop that comes out king high with two clubs. So I got a flush drop and the initial raiser puts in a pretty good size bet. That, and it usually means that he has something good. So I'm thinking maybe he has a king. And if he has a king with a flush draw, I'm in deep trouble. Turn card comes as a four of clubs. I'm not sure whether he will bet this since the obvious draw got there. So I decided to lead for $70. Just trying to get some value out of a hand like ace king. He thinks for a moment and then puts in the call. So yeah, he might be drawn to beat me. Maybe he has a, a, a big club as his kicker. We get a bad river card. He won't pay off very much, but I decided to go for it anyway. I put in a bet for 130. He snap folds seven five of diamonds face up. All right, that was the end of day one. Here comes day two. Hold on to your hats for this one. We're about an hour and a half into the session. I haven't um, had very many hands to play. I've just been stealing a lot of small pots. And here I have two jacks from the plus one. There's a $6 straddle. I open for 20. End up getting two callers for the 20. And um, we're going to go three ways to this flop with $70 in the pot. Flop comes out 5-5-10 five, five, with two clubs. I do not have the jack of clubs. Uh, 
first person end up checking. I decided to bet this thing for $35. Player in the cutoff puts in the quick call for the $35. He's a kind of a action player, you might say. And uh, he can have a wide range at this point. Turn card comes as a five of hearts, so we make a full house. I decided to check it over to him, see if he'll take a stab if he had a 10. He checks it back right away. Kind of interesting, maybe he has a flush draw and he's giving up. Or he could have a like a medium-sized pocket pair and he'll maybe he'll pay off a bet thinking I'm just betting ace high. So I make a bet for $60. Uh, expecting him to either make a crying call or to muck his hand. Instead, he gives me a little bit of a, a speech. You know the type. And I'm going, does he really have a five? And then he says, all in. And I'm going, God dang it. I can't believe this guy has a five. And I go, man, I've, I've played some poker with him, and he seems like to always hold over me. And I go, the only five missing is a uh, five of spades. And I go, I, I don't think I can get away for 120 more dollars. I'm, I'm getting pretty good price to put in the call, and he has to have the five of spades. It might be a bad call, but I'm going to call, and if he shows me a five of spades, it better not be with a jack behind it, because that would just really infuriate me. So I throw in the crying call, and he shows me Jack Five of Spades. Unbelievable. Oh well, ran into quads. And well, let's get on with the next hand. Well, a little while later, I look down at Ace King Offsuit. Uh, ended up putting in a raise to 15. I get uh, two callers, including the same player from the previous hand. Uh, he happens to be on the button this time. Flop comes out. Ace high with a nine and an eight. And there are two spades. I have the king of spades with some backdoor flush draws. I decided to lead at this thing. And uh, for $25, both players ended up putting in the call. So looking for a blank, uh, it's a pretty coordinated board. We end up getting the queen of diamonds. It puts up a secondary flush draw. It completes the obvious straight. I think I can get value from a lot of the draws, uh, hands like 9-10, jack-9. Um, and if I end up getting you know, raised, I, I can just dump my one pair type of hand because with that kind of board, they either have it or they don't, right? So first player folds. Next player, snap, jams, all in. Yeah, this feels like two pair. It doesn't feel like a straight, but... Um, yeah, it definitely feels like two pair. So I take a peek at the board, fold my hand. He does flash that he had queen eight offsuit. He owns me again. Well, I had $500 to my stack and uh, those hands haven't been working out. The good hands haven't been working out. I've been very successful in stealing small pots when everyone shows weakness. Here, there was a $7 straddle. A bunch of people put in a call for the $7. So I decided to raise it up to 45, just trying to steal it. As I said, I've been very successful uh, so far today stealing blinds like this. It looks like this was going to be successful until it comes to the very last player who ends up putting in the call for the $45. So, yeah, I got a piece of shit, basically, as a hand. And I got a player who thinks his hand is worth at least $45. That's a lot more worth than I put on my particular hand. Flop comes out 443, all rainbow. So not too many players would hit this flop, and he comes out swinging for $60. In my mind, I think he has like a, a pocket pair, maybe a medium-sized pocket pair, and he's just trying to feel out where he's at. I don't have anything, but I think uh, my image has been fairly solid from the hands I showed. So I decided to go for a raise here, uh, trying to price out hands like pocket fives or sixes, I have seven eights, so they probably doesn't have those pairs. Maybe even nines, tens, perhaps. This looks like a definite overpair, and I would definitely play an overpair this way against this particular player. So I'm expecting a fold, but instead he says, um, "How much did he raise?" And the dealer said, "120." He goes, uh, "I raised to 300." So he puts in a min raise to my raise, and basically I'm done with the hand, and I'm thinking. What could he be doing this with? Is he that sticky? So I feel like a donkey. Kind of wasted uh, $225 here, but uh, oh well. I fold. 
Well, the game's getting deeper, and I consider the money being in weaker hands, so I decided to add a thousand to my stack. So we got fourteen hundred dollars in my stack. I'm in the game for two thousand. Uh, I looked down at nine ten suited, pretty good hand. I opened for fifteen dollars. End up getting a call from the player on the button and in the blinds. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes out eight seven deuce with two diamonds. So I flop an open ender, and I got two over cards. First two players check. I'm going to continue for $30 with my straight draw and two overs. I get a uh, call from the player on the button. The other two players didn't uh, have too much because they ended up folding. So we're going to be uh, heads up on this particular hand with $120 in the pot. Now the turn card is an interesting one. It's a king of clubs. So it doesn't hit my hand. It doesn't make a flush draw. But it definitely hits my range. And I'm going to continue here, trying to represent that maybe I, if I did have something, it was something like a, a ace-king type of hand. And I bet for $65. Thinking that he, if he has a flush draw, he'll put in a crying call. If he has some sort of uh, medium-sized pair, like an eight or a seven, uh, he, he might find a fold. But he doesn't do that. He ends up putting in a raise. And when he does put in the raise, I'm thinking, oh boy, what did I just get myself into? So he makes it 215, which is $150 more than my bet. So it's not a very big raise, but am I getting the right odds to draw to a straight? I figured his most likely hand is something like 7 8 suited, something that he would call from the button with. Could be pocket sevens, pocket eights also. Could be a king high flush draw that he's overvaluing against someone who might be playing ace king. So I think he has value. So now can I make my straight? I've got eight outs to make a straight. I'm not really getting the right price for that. But my hand could also look like a flush draw. So if you take that into account, I can bluff with all flush cards. And uh, I can bet all straight cards. Most likely he will fold to the flush draws because that's the most likely and most obvious. And he'll pay off the straight draws. That's a wonderful combination. So that's my plan. I put in the call and we get to see a river card of a nine of diamonds. All right, sticking with the plan. I say all in. He has about $430 behind. I have him covered and I don't get snap call. Yay for that. Uh, that means he doesn't have a king with a diamond and a flush draw. So I just have to fade everything else. He could have two pair, maybe a set. Who knows? But I am representing a flush. I'm putting all my chips in the center of the pot. And uh, now it's up to him whether he wants to call off the rest of his stack. And uh, it's not an easy call because even though I've stuck on the day i haven't been splashy it's just been you know beats and hands that they don't see i mean if they saw the hand like seven eight off to man i'll get snap called but in this situation it looked like i laid down a tough well, maybe over pair on that hand so he thinks for a while and finds the fold very happy that this one got through uh, this might be the turning point to my round so Let's hope we can run it up from here. I'm in the big blind with two kings. There was a limper, a raise to 20, a call for 20, and now it's to me, and I decided to make it 130. Uh, the initial raiser on the button is the same player that uh, min raised me when I had that 8-7 offsuit, and I can get a little sense that he has a powerful hand. He doesn't re-raise me, so I don't think he has aces. Flop comes out, jack 9-9 nine, nine with two diamonds. So I'm in a world of hurt against pocket jacks, but pre-flop I think he folds a lot of his jacks and he calls with basically all his queens here. So I'm thinking more like he has pocket queens. So I lead for 150. I think maybe if he has pocket jacks, he would just flat here. But he is the king of the uh, min raise on big pots. And... Um, that's exactly what he does. He puts in a min raise to $300. Now, when he's doing this, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, he could be min raising me with pocket jacks. Uh, maybe he slow played aces. 
but I really don't think he would. I think this is like, I'm like 80, 90% sure he has pocket queens here. And the other 10 to 20%, he's just going to double through me. That's just it. The only other hand he would call me with preflop for $130, he'd be like ace king suited. And I got the king of diamonds blocking a flush draw. So unless he's made a loose, loose call with ace queen of diamonds, yeah, he has pocket queens. I jam. He doesn't snap call me right away, so pocket jacks are off the table. He still could have slow played aces, but that's like a really small chance. He puts in the call. I feel confident about my hand. We get to see a turn card of a deuce of clubs and a river card of a ace of spades. I roll over my kings, and he flashes that he had pocket queens. So we take down a very, very nice pot. I'm back on the road to profitability. So as I'm stacking my chips, I'm in the small blind. There is a open for 20, a call for 20, and I look down at two aces in the small blind. Are you kidding me? This is just unbelievable. So I put in a raise, I make it $95. I only get call from the initial limper, which was kind of a surprise. I'm thinking someone would limp and call such a big raise, either has a medium sized pair or a hand like ace queen, maybe ace jack, possibly ace king. Okay, well, if he has a medium sized pair, he either hit a set and is gonna double through me, or he's going to make a crying call here with something like, say, pocket tens or pocket nines in case I'm just betting out with ace king. So I put in a small bet. It's uh, $70. I guess I could have gone smaller since his, his stack is kind of short. He already put one third of his chips in preflop. So I figured the, two, the other two thirds was going to come in one way or another. But he tanks for a very long time and ends up finding a fold. So... Not quite sure what he would call $95 with preflop for a third of his stack and then just fold to a jack high flop. Anyway, this was the uh, end of our comeback. We did play for another half hour or so. Nothing else too interesting happened, but uh, happy to not only get even, but uh, to book a decent size win. So pretty good days here. I ended up winning 965 that first day, 470 that last day. Uh, got in the game pretty deep on that second day, but uh, ended up uh, getting a good bluff through and then uh, hitting a couple of hands in the right spots against the right players and getting paid off. So, yeah, I'm pleased with that. I, I do appreciate everyone watching and uh, making comments on the video. And uh, thank you for all your support. It's uh, been a great journey so far, and I look forward to it continuing. So until next time, everyone. Good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.